The next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 3029, the name of Alison Johnson, on extending maternity and paternity leave for parents of premature babies. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate press the request to speak buttons now? And I call on Alison Johnson to open the debate. Ms Johnson, seven minutes, please. Microphone, please, Mr Cardin. Ms Johnson's microphone, please. Could you move to the next seat, perhaps, or have been jinxed? Any better? That's fine. You can start now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm very glad to have the opportunity to lead this debate this afternoon. I'd like to thank Katrina Ogilvy and Karen Sturrett, whose campaigns and petitions have gathered so much support. And thanks too to Bliss, the national charity supporting premature and sick babies, and the many local charities who help families and raise funds for neonatal units including members from Simpson Special Care Babies in Lothian, who are here in the public gallery today. I want to focus on two important matters this afternoon. The Private Members Bill in the House of Commons, which seeks to extend maternity and paternity leave and pay for the parents of premature babies, and the steps we can take in Scotland to improve financial support for families whose babies are born prematurely or require neonatal care. I want to express my heartfelt support for Steve Reid's Private Members Bill in the Commons. Legislation relating to parental leave and pay is currently a reserved matter. However, I'm sure many of us here wish the campaign to extend parental leave and pay for the parents of premature babies every success. I understand the bill will seek to extend paid maternity leave when babies are born before 37 weeks, allowing an additional week of statutory maternity pay for every full week the baby is born before term. And this additional maternity leave could be used as shared parental leave between mothers and fathers. Campaigners have been calling for such changes to parental leave legislation for years. Currently, parents of premature babies aren't entitled to any additional maternity or paternity leave. In the difficult, distressing, unexpected period between a premature birth and a baby's anticipated due date, time spent on a neonatal hospital ward. Research by Bliss estimates that families with babies in neonatal care can be faced with an average additional expense of around £218 a week when extra costs like childcare and travel are taken into account. These costs can impact on the number of visits that parents can have with their premature baby. And premature birth can also mean that mothers lose out on their last few weeks, the weeks they were expecting to work the wages families rely on when they're budgeting for their baby. Families often count on those savings to cover the gap between the end of statutory maternity pay and returning to work. This degree of financial pressure can force parents to return to work earlier than they'd like and before they feel their baby is ready for childcare. In some cases, it may not be appropriate for that baby to go into childcare. A baby born very prematurely between 28 and 31 weeks of pregnancy may spend an average of 44 days in neonatal care. That's over six weeks in a hospital, six weeks not knowing when or if you'll be able to take that tiny baby home. Mothers can take 52 weeks of leave, but statutory maternity pay is only available for 39 of those weeks. A mum of very, a very premature baby returning to work after paid leave finishes would have had, on average, just 33 weeks at home with her baby far shorter than the year of leave that many parents plan to take. And premature babies can take longer to reach developmental milestones during maternity leave. It can't be right or fair that parental leave in the UK doesn't accommodate this difference. Additional paid parental leave is already available to parents of premature babies in a number of European countries, including Finland and Spain. Extending leave and pay is the simplest and the fairest way to address these problems. But if the bill in Westminster doesn't, uh, doesn't progress, then it's incumbent on us here in Scotland to listen to the clear message that campaigners are sending and find alternative ways of supporting the parents of premature babies and indeed parents of all babies in neonatal care. 
I would ask the Scottish Government to do all that it can to deliver financial support to all parents whose babies need prolonged hospital care. NHS paediatric hospitals lead excellent work supporting those who need help with the unexpected cost of hospital care. However, the Scotland Act gives the Scottish Parliament the power to provide assistance with maternity expenses and we have the power to create some new benefits. I would ask the Scottish Government to heed this campaign and make support for parents in these circumstances as robust as possible. We don't have the latitude to replace pay, but we could introduce a premature birth maternity grant or a neonatal care maternity grant to help parents with additional maternity expenses to take the financial shock out of a situation that no parent can prepare for. Let's build on the good work that's happening with the baby box scheme. Sadly, up to 40% of premature babies, the mothers of premature babies, are affected by postnatal depression shortly after birth. And I'm glad to see that the draft mental health strategy makes perinatal mental health a priority and that we'll finally have a managed clinical network for perinatal mental health. But I would like more clarity on how frontline perinatal mental health services will be resourced. And I note that Wales have already ring-fenced Barnet consequentials related to perinatal mental health. The forthcoming review of maternity and neonatal services should highlight opportunities to improve maternal health. Presiding officer, boosting the income of pregnant women is one of the best ways to improve their nutrition, their mental health and their overall well-being. And healthier, wealthier children is a well-evidenced approach to income maximisation. Midwives and health visitors have helped more than 10,000 families gain over £11 million in benefits that they were entitled to, but didn't know they didn't know about them. And the Cabinet Secretary for Health and Sport has already given me a commitment to roll it out across the country. The urgent, the urgent need to deliver this is made only too clear by today's annual report on child poverty in Scotland, showing that there are 20,000 more children living in poverty um, in 2014-15, 14 14% rise. Presiding officer, the parents of premature babies in particular are faced with financial uncertainty while being de deprived of valuable, precious time bonding with their new babies. Too many are forced to choose between putting their babies in childcare before they think they're developmentally ready or leaving work altogether. Extending paid leave for these parents is a matter of quality, but we can't simply leave the matter to Westminster and we must look for alternative ways of supporting these families while we continue to push the UK government to do the right thing. Let's do all that we can as a, parent, as, as a parliament to help these parents and families. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Kenneth Gibson, followed by Donald Cameron. Mr Gibson, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I congratulate Alison Johnson for bringing this debate to the Chamber today. And of course, I commend Katrina Ogilvie for launching her Small Things campaign and Steve Reid MP for introducing the bill to the House of Commons. As we're all aware, employment matters, including parental leave, are reserved, and the UK Parliament will have to decide whether and in what form to pass the proposed bill. However, it's still worth discussing these matters here in the Scottish Parliament, and this debate rightly acknowledges that. I also want to pay tribute to everyone involved with Bliss Scotland and recognise the excellent work that they do to support families dealing with premature and vulnerable newborns. Most of my constituents who give birth do so at Crosshouse Hospital in Kilmarnock or at the REH in Paisley. It is reassuring to know that Bliss Scotland has a presence at both these hospitals through Bliss Champions, who provide information and emotional support to parents whose babies are in neonatal units, and that the support doesn't stop the moment their baby leaves the hospital. Even in ideal circumstances, welcoming a newborn baby into the world is an intense and exhausting experience. Yet how often has it been said by mothers that all the trauma of labour and delivery melts away the moment they hold their new baby in their arms for the first time? However, for around 5,800 babies each year, their parents don't get to experience this euphoric feeling as their baby requires immediate neonatal care to simply keep it alive as soon as it's born. Instead, there is a heartache of not being able to hold the baby straight away, not knowing whether their child will survive, and how the premature arrival will affect their development as the child grows up. In some cases, the mother herself will require medical care, exacerbating the stress the family is already under. Aside from the desire parents feel to be close to their newborn baby, the importance of early physical contact cannot be overstated as it has been proven to have a significant and far-reaching impact on the child's mental and social development. 
As a father myself, I was particularly struck to learn that nearly 70% of fathers end up having to return to work before their baby has even left the neonatal unit in the hospital. I'm therefore glad that the importance of the presence of baby's fathers is acknowledged looking at the scope of the bill. Although the matter of paternal leave is not devolved, there are things the Scottish Government can do to increase uptake of parental leave and reduce the trauma that often accompanies premature birth. Scottish ministers are looking at ways to encourage parents to take up more of the parental leave they are entitled to within the existing legislative framework. They are also in the process of carrying out a review of maternal and neonatal services, as Alison Johnson pointed out, with a view to improving the care provided. After extensive consultation with a variety of experts, patients and other stakeholders, the review group is currently finalising its report, which is expected to present, be presented to ministers any day now. In fact, perhaps the minister already has the report. I look forward to reading its findings and recommendations so that services can be further developed to meet the changing needs of babies and their parents. But when it comes to the start of our life, having excellent neonatal care alone isn't enough. Babies need to be with their parents, and it's simply unfair that a premature date of birth eats into parental leave. A baby born at 28 weeks will on average spend the first 44 days of its life in a neonatal unit. One would think that a baby who has spent the first three months struggling to stay alive needs their parents to be around for longer, not a shorter time once life really begins. Equally, after having had none of the euphoria I described earlier, doesn't it seem unfair and damaging to send parents back to work three months earlier than other parents after their due date? And that's no doubt why we have such high levels of uh, postnatal depression that Alison Johnson touched on. Presiding officer, people who have cheated death are often said to be living on borrowed time after that point in life. Taking the view that premature babies live on borrowed time until the day they were meant to be born, starting their clock on parental leave any sooner than that simply makes no sense and I urge the Scottish Government to do all it can to assist parents of premature babies. Thank you very much, Mr Gibson. I think I hear a naughty mobile phone. No doubt it's gone away. I call Donald Cameron, followed by Richard Lennon. Mr Cameron. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I, I warmly welcome the opportunity to uh, contribute to this debate, and I'd like to thank Alison Johnson for, for tabling this motion for members' business. As a father of three young children, I recognise the supreme importance of parents being close to their children at birth and during the earliest stages of their development. I, for one, will never forget that moment when your child is born and that heady mix of emotions, relief, elation, joy, and exhaustion, even as a bystander. For many parents, the days and weeks afterwards are exciting and daunting times, ensuring that your newborn is cared for and receives round-the-clock care upon their arrival. We were very lucky. All of our children have been born at term and were born healthy, and I was able to hold my children and able to give them that physical contact that Kenneth Gibson spoke about so rightly. But for some babies, sadly, much more support is required. Babies born with a severe or minor disability, and in this instance, babies born prematurely, of course, require extra attention not just from their parents, but also from clinical specialists, and frequently require intensive hospital care. According to figures from Bliss Scotland, there are around 5,800 babies born in Scotland every year who require specialist neonatal care, and almost half of this number are born prematurely. And depending on the time of birth, neonatal care can last anywhere between four and 93 days. And it is thus vital that our NHS has the facilities and staff able to ensure that babies requiring additional neonatal care receive the best possible treatment. We are incredibly fortunate to live not only in a country where parental leave is supported, but a country that affords both parents with the opportunity to take a period of leave from work so they can care for new offspring. And whilst for many years it was only the mother that was entitled to a full period of maternity leave, the UK government did introduce the shared parental leave law, which allows parents the opportunity to share leave over a 50-week period. Moreover, if a child is born prematurely, statutory maternity leave commences the day after the child is born. We are also fortunate to live in a country where leave is supported financially. The ability for working parents to receive 90% of average weekly earnings before tax for the first six weeks and thereafter either approximately £140 per week or 90% of average weekly earnings. I fundamentally believe that these things are the sign of a country, government and society that supports parents when they need it most. Parental leave is, of course, a matter reserved to the UK Government, but we on these benches will do our utmost to ensure the terms of the motion and the sentiments expressed today in the Chamber reach the relevant people in Westminster. 
And whilst the motion today concentrates on parental leave, it's worth recalling there is also an issue of funding the right neonatal and maternity services in our NHS. Much can be done. In England, for example, funding has been invested to approve facilities in maternity and neonatal care units across the country, creating projects that allow parent accommodation to be built with bedrooms, kitchens, ensuite facilities, etc., all designed to improve the environment for parents and families of children receiving vital neonatal care. And I recognise the maternity staff in the NHS Scotland do an incredible job in supporting babies and their families. And I'd also commend charities such as Bliss Scotland for all the work that they do in this area. But let's ensure that our NHS here in Scotland receives adequate funding and that, this, that our NHS staff can cope with increasing demand and that parents have the ability to access maternity services as close to home as possible. And let's ensure that our NHS hospitals have the equipment necessary to care for children who require specialist care at birth. Deputy Presiding Officer, I hope that all the contributions today can feed into the overall debate about how we support parents and babies. And in that vein, I eagerly anticipate the Scottish Government's review of maternity and neonatal services so that we can plan how we deliver this kind of care in the years ahead. Thank you, Mr Cameron. I call Richard Leonard to be followed by John Finney. Mr Leonard, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I first of all uh, thank Alison Johnson for tabling this motion and so paving the way for this important debate. It is often said that the measure of a society is how it treats its very oldest and its very youngest members. And there are no younger members of our society than babies born prematurely in neonatal care. So the treatment of them and the treatment of their parents should be a matter of concern to us all. Um, it is one of the single most important roles of this parliament to give voice to the voiceless. So let us speak up for the rights of those who may not yet speak and let us listen to those whose voices all too often go unheard. For babies born before full term, and there are nearly 6,000 babies uh, born in Scotland each year who are admitted to a neonatal unit for life-saving care, for those babies there is usually an early life of operations, an early life of high dependency care, and so an early life spent not at home uh, but in hospital. As well as the emotional trauma this brings for many families, it also means the extra cost of travelling to and from hospital. In some cases as well, it can mean additional childcare costs. And then for many, it is all too often a story of wages foregone when one or both parents can no longer meet the demands of their job and go on unpaid leave. And ultimately, for some, not just wages foregone, but jobs and careers foregone too, as too many of these parents are forced to give up work or indeed are dismissed. So more costs, reduced income, a combination which plunges too many families into debt. And the cost, of course, is not just pecuniary. Four out of 10 mothers of premature babies will suffer postnatal depression compared to one in 10 mothers of full-term babies. And that's not the end of it. Let me share with Parliament this afternoon a real-life example. Uh, constituents of mine, Donna and Gavin McCall, and their daughter, Mirren. Mirren was born 10 weeks early and has required two major operations. As a result, she was in hospital for the first four months of her life. Although she is now home, Mirren, uh, Mirren still has to attend hospital regularly. Three hospital appointments this month, two hospital appointments next month, with Wisher General, Monklands General, the Royal Sick Kids, Hair Myers. As Donna McCall said to me this week, Hospital staff are great at keeping in touch. However, community-based, i.e. health visitors and clubs, are not prepared or trained enough. She also highlighted aftercare and support available to families is poor. She takes Mirren to clubs to help minimise any development delay, massage, music and sensory classes, but these all have to be paid for. None are free. And because Mirren was in hospital for the first 16 weeks of her life, as Donna describes it, only five of her nine months maternity leave have been spent with her daughter. And that is the central point of this debate this afternoon. The law on maternity and paternity leave, as it stands, assumes, assumes babies are born at full term. But so many are not. And that's why I am too pleased to see that it is a Labour MP, Steve Reid, who has introduced the maternity and paternity leave 
premature birth bill in the House of Commons. Uh, it will go for a second reading uh, in March of next year, and I'm pleased that it has cross-party support, uh, although let me gently mention that no SNP MPs uh, are recorded as supporting it at stage one, and I'm sure that will be corrected in time for stage two. Uh, in my view, uh, the bill will have the support of every right-thinking member of Parliament and every right-thinking member uh, of society. And it is not, as Alison Johnson has pointed out, without international precedent. Deputy Presiding Officer, can I conclude by paying tribute to the organisation Bliss, who have campaigned since 1979 for babies born prematurely? Um, they yes, are I'm afraid, sorry, that's it. You must conclude. It's four, over four minutes. OK, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I call John Finney to be followed by Miles Briggs. Mr Finney, please. Uh, th thank you, President Officer. Um, uh, I'd uh, also like to thank the various groups for their um, briefings and the outstanding support that uh, they provide. It's been alluded to other members uh, and congratulate uh, my colleague Alison Johnson for bringing this forward. In a previous life, I was involved in dealing with the terms and conditions of police officers, and that included maternity and paternity leave, uh, putting into practice uh, what had been hard fought for uh, terms and conditions. Uh, that was dealing with a very male-dominated, particularly at senior rank level, and required a sizable change in attitudes. Um, terms and conditions, and this can be the case to this day, can often be seen as being PC trendy or downright frivolous. And, and many of these things that were seen as that way in the past are now mainstream in terms like protected duties and reasonable adjustments. And I, I, I would have to say things are far from perfect, but we have seen progress in the last few decades, and, and I hope that can be moved forward. Um, it's, it's important that to go hand in hand with that is there's knowledge and understanding. So um, parents of premature babies are not entitled to any additional maternity or paternity leave. So whilst my colleague Donald Cameron outlined what they are entitled to, the significant thing is with the additional burdens and pressures on everyone associated with that, the very commendable proposal at Westminster is to have additional. Dads indeed are currently entitled to two weeks paternity leave and I think if there was any objective uh, uh, um, assessment of the impact of this uh, bill at Westminster were it to go ahead, then it would be seen that the beneficiaries weren't just simply the mother, the father, indeed the child, but it would extend to the siblings. And um, a needs assessment would surely indicate that all of these require physical, mental uh, and social support. And it is also the case, and it's not a way that I would like to view this, but it is also the case that the benefits for an employer too um, I also want to talk briefly on, on uh, rurality. Just many of the problems of delivering health care um, are compounded by rurality. And this is, this is a measure that would go some way to uh, offsetting some of the challenges connected uh, with that, which apply, I accept, regardless of geography. Um, Besides, officer, the, Scotland rightly lauds the importance it affords to child development. And uh, I, I, as I say, I would wish this move to, to be supported for the right reasons, the well-being of children and their, uh, their, uh, the well-being of parents and their premature child. And all the evidence uh, suggests that a positive approach uh, to terms and conditions uh, reaps benefits, as I say, for everyone, um, progressive employers as well. We talk about the planned future introduction of shared parental leave uh, and what this means for, for parent. That's going to bring challenges too. And uh, I agree that Scotland needs to listen to the clear message that the, the campaigners are sending um, and find uh, alternative person specific because we forget at our peril that we are dealing with individual, individual child with individual uh, with needs, parents with individual circumstances and ways of supporting these parents um, and as has been said, there will be benefit not just for uh, the parents of premature babies, but if we can improve the lot for all uh, babies in neonatal care. Um, can, can I also pick up on a, a comment that my colleague Donald Cameron made? I, I am reassured that uh, Mr Cameron will share the content of this debate with colleagues, because I think that's very important. And I was very ready to intervene and ask his position until he made that statement. So I, I think it's very positive that there are a number of suggestions. I want to conclude just by referring to an article that I had a quick look at um, when I was uh, researching for this header up. Mothers of premature babies also need care. It was a, it's a, a, a leader article in the, the Guardian last year by Joanna Moorhead, who concludes by saying, it's not the time to fall apart. A little bit of support can make a lot of difference. 
And I think this is a measure that could help many, and I commend Alison for bringing it to us. Thank, Thank you me. very much, Mr Finney. <laughs> Paul Miles Briggs. Mr Briggs, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, I'd like to congratulate Alison Johnson on securing today's debate, and I'm pleased to be taking part in it today. I want to begin by commending the excellent work undertaken by Bliss Scotland, whom I was pleased to meet with uh, recently. And as the motion sets out, around 5,800 babies are indeed born in Scotland each year who need specialist new natal care, with half of, the, half of these being born prematurely. Bliss Scotland plays a very important role in supporting many families who have sick and premature babies, including in the Lothian region Alison Johnson and I represent. And I'd like to pay tribute to all those who work for and volunteer in this valuable charity, including, as Kenny Gibson has outlined today, uh, the Bliss champions who work in hospitals across the country. I recognise that parents of sick and premature babies who require extended periods of specialist hospital care will often experience immense worry and stress and face substantial extra financial pr pressures. Many parents in these circumstances talk about the difficulties of spending weeks or months in hospital unexpectedly when they had been looking forward to bonding with their new babies at home. The impact of these this on parents' mental health, I think, is really significant and something we also need to, to mention within the context of this debate. All of us will have genuine sympathy for parents in these circumstances, and I'm also very aware that many premature babies, babies will have ongoing health problems which make it more difficult for parents to return to work, with men, many requiring repeated hospital appointments after they actually come home. While statutory maternity leave of 52 weeks across the UK Parents who have been employees with, some, with the same employer also have the right to a separate entitlement of parental leave of 18 weeks unpaid for, for parent, per parent per child up to an eight, a child's 18th birthday, um, for which four weeks can be taken in one year. And I'm aware that some employers already, um, who are to be commended, already try to be as flexible as possible with parents of premature babies offering extra compassionate leave, sick leave or use of annual leave. But I accept that parents and that Bliss and other charities want to see more than, than just these informal arrangements and that we need to look at extension to formal maternity and paternity leave and statutory maternity pay. So as Donald Cameron has said, these are matters clearly within the remit of the UK government and in light of today's debate and ahead of the second reading of the Member's Bill on this subject in the Commons next May, I'll be also writing to the UK Government asking for them to take account of today's debate and ask if they will be conducting any further review in this area. While we must consider very carefully the financial consequences of extending statutory maternity pay and the, the potential impact this may have on business, especially small businesses in Scotland, there are strong arguments and that more can be done and should be done, and, I, and done to support specific needs and requirements of parents with premature babies. So to conclude, Deputy Presiding Officer, I congratulate my colleague Alison Johnson on bringing this important issue to Parliament today, and I hope we can make further progress in the new year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Briggs. Mr Balfour, I can give you two minutes if that's all all right. That's all I have left. Right. Oh, oh sorry, uh, Deputy President. Officer. I hadn't appreciated with my turn. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy uh, President Officer. And can I thank Alison Johnson uh, for her comments? Um, I did want to make just a few brief comments. Uh, as someone who has experienced um, the care that we've been talking about here in Edinburgh, our experience of the Simpsons here in Edinburgh was exemplary. Uh, we were. Uh, fortunate to have twin girls who were born at 34 weeks. Um, it came as no surprise that we were going to need to be born early, uh, but when they were taken away, rushed away into special care, uh, the uh, loss and the fear uh, that came with that uh, was great. But the care that they received and we received as a couple uh, was um, exemplary. And I also want to congratulate the work of Bliss and also the work of the Simpson Hospital for the support that they give many parents. As Alison Johnson and uh, Kenneth Gibson and other members um, have mentioned, often um, after uh, a child is born prematurely, uh, the mother will suffer greater uh, postnatal depression. I think there are many good organisations across Scotland that offer support here in Lothians since 2015. Juno 
have been offering volunteer support. Uh, mothers who have suffered in that condition, have had that condition, then going on to support other mothers in that. And I think those type of organisations need, need to be welcomed and supported. Clearly, the birth of any child is the highlight of most parents' lives. And to have um, that support and to have that help is so important. And like my two colleagues um, in front of me, I too will be writing to the Minister to ask um, him to look at the issues that have been raised today. Thank you, Deputy Provost Officer, for fitting me in. Thank you very much, Mr Balfour. I'm glad I managed to get you in. I call the Minister, Jamie Hepburn, to respond for the Government. Minister, seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, uh, President Officer. Can I uh, begin by joining others in thanking Alison Johnson for bringing uh, forward this debate? Can I thank uh, those who have uh, contributed uh, today and also uh, join Alison Johnson in welcoming those to the, the gallery who have uh, come specifically to, to uh, witness today's uh, debate? Can I uh, say at the outset I recognise the importance of uh, this uh, particular uh, area that we are debating uh, this afternoon? I, I doubt there will be any of us in this chamber not aware of a family that's been touched by the experience of uh, premature uh, birth. Uh, and Donald Cameron's uh, remarks, he spoke of uh, his uh, experience as a, a father, that, uh, and indeed Kenny Gibson also spoke about the uh, experience, the early experience of being a father and that early contact uh, with uh, your, uh, your children. Uh, I'm a father as well, I know how important that was uh, for me, and I think those who are denied that experience, our, our hearts, of course, uh, go out to them. And it is uh, incumbent on us to consider how we can better uh, support uh, such uh, individuals. Uh, the motion uh, presented before us uh, uh, is in uh, two uh, parts, one referring to the, the Smallest Things campaign, to which I'll turn to, and the other to uh, the uh, proposed legislation before uh, the House of Con Commons, the Maternity and Paternity Leave Premature uh, Birth uh, Bill. I understand uh, the second reading had originally been scheduled uh, for last week, of course, there was a, a debate on uh, the Istanbul uh, Convention on uh, that date. And my understanding is when it was originally scheduled for, and it will now uh, take place in March of uh, next year, which is uh, something I will be uh, watching with considerable interest. Clearly, uh, we've not seen the full detail of the bill. What I can say to members is that uh, uh, the administration here is very sympathetic uh, to uh, the general fair work focus inherent with, uh, within it. Uh, I uh, also welcome the Smallest Things uh, campaign and the research that has been undertaken uh, by Bliss, which of course recognises the, uh, the specific extra challenge parents of premature babies can face, which have been touched on by uh, virtually every uh, member. Uh, members have spoken of the review of uh, maternity and neonatal services, which was uh, announced by the, the Minister for Public Health uh, in early 2015. Bliss were of course part of that review, which examined choice, quality and safety of maternity and neonatal services in light of current evidence and best practice uh, in consultation with the workforce, the boards and, uh, of course, uh, those uh, who have been uh, patients and utilised such uh, services. Uh, Mr Gibson uh, asked if I had uh, sight of the report. I can confirm I have not uh, had uh, sight of that report, but I know uh, that health ministers will continue to update Parliament uh, in uh, due course in terms of where uh, the report goes. As uh, members have rightly reflected, the, uh, uh, the Scottish Government does not have responsibility over an entitlement to uh, maternity paternity leave or statutory paternity or paternity uh, pay. Uh, of course, uh, we do not let these things inhibit us in trying to uh, make improvements. I have referred to the review of maternity and neonatal services. Uh, we also want to uh, utilise some of the, the newly devolved social security powers that are coming uh, our way. We have set out we will be uh, putting in place a, a best start grant to replace the current Sure Start Maternity uh, grant, which will provide increased financial support to, to those eligible families with uh, young children at key points throughout the early years of a, a child's uh, life. I think that will lead to significant improvements in uh, support for uh, young families, uh, starting in two pilot areas from the 1st of January and across Scotland from uh, summer of 2017. Every single newborn in Scotland will receive a baby box of essential items. Uh, this will include clothes, nappies, bedding, books and uh, baby care items. That, of course, uh, is very much informed by the experience. Uh, Alison Johnson spoke at the experience of other countries across uh, uh, Europe that 
uh, ambition to take forward the baby box project is very much informed by the experience of uh, Finland, which uh, has seen significant uh, reductions in infant mortality, uh, largely related to such uh, an initiative. Uh, of course, we have, have uh, other actions as well. One an area that's not a responsibility yet, but which will become a responsibility uh, in due course is the area of uh, tribunal uh, fees. We have seen uh, information provided from the Ministry of Justice that shows a near 76 per cent reduction in the number of pregnancy and maternity related discrimination cases brought uh, to tribunals over the uh, July and September period of this year compared to the same period in 2012 when there were uh, no uh, fees. Uh, I'm not sure if that counts, uh, constitutes a failure of policy or indeed a success in policy, uh, depending on how you might view the motivation of the UK Government in introducing it. Of course, we disagree with that direction and we have committed to abolishing fees for employment tribunals when we uh, are able to do so. It will also seek to influence areas not in our uh, control. One example is, of course, the area of pre pregnancy and maternity discrimination with research from the Equality and Human Rights Commission and the Department for Business, Innovation and Skills found that uh, around one in nine mothers uh, reported being either dismissed, made compulsory redundant or treated so poorly they felt they had to leave uh, their job. That's why I'm chairing uh, the working group that uh, we set up to uh, identify of course. Alison so, Johnson. Um, I do appreciate it is a reserved matter, but just for absolute clarity, does the Minister agree that as a matter of equity, maternity leave and pay should be extended for these parents of premature babies and those who are in neonatal care? Minister. Well, uh, of course, this isn't uh, our area of responsibility. I uh, believe it should be uh, our area of responsibility. I've already set out. We'll uh, be looking very closely at the legislation that's been taken forward by uh, Mr Reid and the UK Parliament. Of course, the devil is always in the detail, but in terms of the, uh, the broad direction of travel, if I wasn't clear enough in setting out my sympathies with that direction, then hopefully uh, Alison Johnson's intervention has allowed me to, to rectify that matter. You're in your last minute, Minister. Indeed, uh, I am, uh, President Officer. So I was referring to the, the President Maternity Discrimination Working Group that we set up with a range of uh, partners, which uh, I'll be chairing to take forward uh, further work. We also, and I think this is, gets to the nub of the issue in terms of uh, as not uh, bemoaning, as we're all often accused of doing, bemoaning uh, the uh, fact that we don't have power over uh, certain areas, we don't have power over employment law, we don't have responsibility for uh, areas around uh, paid uh, maternity uh, leave. But what we do have uh, uh, an agenda and is embedding a more flexible approach from employers. That's why we fund family friendly working Scotland clearly. Uh, in this area and many others. We'd want to see employers take a flexible approach. Miles Briggs uh, rightly says some employers are good at doing so, others not so. We'll continue to push them on that agenda. But I can assure you, President Officer, and other uh, members of the Chamber, uh, where we have responsibility, we'll do all we can to make improvements. Where we don't, we'll do what we can. But we'll also always be willing to explore these matters with the UK Government and make sure this Parliament's voice is heard where they have responsibility. Thank you very much. That concludes this debate. There will be a short pause before we move on to the next item of business.